the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Tonight on DC News Now at 5, a potential serial attacker on the loose. What neighbors are saying tonight after two women were attacked in the same Arlington neighborhood. And Metro raising rates on the rails. When the changes kick in and who gets a break? I feel like I got the best job in the city, man. And I say that through the lens of I get to help people every single day. Also, a DC News Now exclusive. We sit down one on one with Robert Conti, a chief of the Metropolitan Police Department, to find out how he plans to tackle crime in the district. Good Friday evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 5. I'm Thasmeen Mahfouz. Mark Hall has a night off and breaking now. The Supreme Court just announced that the abortion drug, Mifepristone, will be allowed for use. This is just temporary until it has more time to fully consider the court challenge. Now, the court asked both sides to weigh in by Tuesday on whether or not to restrict the drug while the case works its way through federal courts. The order suggests that that court will decide by late Wednesday. And Arlington County police are looking for a potential serial attacker after two women said that someone sexually assaulted them in their homes within 10 days of each other. The first attack, that one happened in the Balsam neighborhood. The second one happened in the Clarendon Courthouse neighborhood. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg talked with police and also neighbors. He joins us live along Clarendon Boulevard. And Daniel, neighbors tell you this is unusual for the area. Well, it tests me. Not only neighbors are saying that, but police as well. I talked with some women who say they're not necessarily afraid, but they are taking precautions. On April 2nd, police received a call about an attempted rape around 4.15 a.m. in the 3900 block of Fairfax Drive in Boston. We got um, an email from my unit owner to let us know about what had happened. I was really surprised because you don't hear about that type of crime in this neighborhood. Jillian Applin lives in a nearby apartment building. It didn't make me too nervous um, because it's not like an abundance of crime, but it's, it's definitely scary that it happened so close to where I live. The second assault happened on April 12th in the 2200 block of Clarendon Boulevard in Clarendon. In both incidents, the suspect gained entry into the female victim's uh, apartment, went into her bedroom and touched her inappropriately. The victim screamed and the suspect fled the scene on foot. Due to similarities in the cases, our detectives with the special victims units are investigating these as possibly related cases. Public information officer Ashley Savage says they're in the process of looking at surveillance images and going over witness interviews. This is unusual um, that we we have instances like this, um, but we want the public to know that we take these cases very seriously. We are deploying significant resources toward these in addition to speaking with witnesses, collecting evidence on scene. We are conducting extra patrols in the area. She says security plans only work if everyone follows them. The weather is getting nicer. We all want to leave our windows open, make sure we're securing our windows at night, securing our doors. I ask that you not piggyback and like if someone's following in behind you, just ask them, hey, can you scan your key fob rather than like letting them follow in. Now, if you do have any surveillance cameras in either of those two areas mentioned in courthouse or in Boston, you are asked to call police. Also, of course, if you see anybody suspicious in your apartment buildings, give police a call too. We're live in Arlington County. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. Daniel, thank you. And also tonight, a learning disabilities teacher has been charged, accused of having a sexual relationship with a Fairfax County student. Police arrested 33-year-old Alea Crodman a day after school administrators at James Madison High School contacted officers. A student there told them that the two had sexual contact. Investigators say the relationship lasted over the course of several months. Crodman was a learning disabilities teacher with the county since the year 2016. She had previously been a nominee for outstanding teacher in the county. Now, in a note to families and staff, the superintendent says the teacher had been placed on administrative leave. And also tonight, a lot of Metro right train riders are about to get uh, more expensive after board members approved a new fiscal budget. But the move also means more riders who can't afford Higher fares can also get access to discounted rates. We love the sound of that, right? So, DC News Now consumer reporter Ben Dennis joins us from DuPont Circle Metro, where he's been crunching the numbers about what this means for passengers. And Ben, how are riders reacting to the news? Hey, Tasmin, good evening. Well, as the saying goes, we followed the money. Metro riders that travel long distances are going to start paying more once they hit the rails come July the 1st. Some consumers expressed 
some disdain about this, but also they're happy to know that lower income riders are gonna see some relief. I say it's unfair because pe some people can't pay for it. A ticket to ride Metro trains. More costly starting this summer. Cost of living is high everywhere. Increasing the price, I don't think it's a good idea. Metro's board decided to increase the cost for train passengers traveling more than three miles. Those new fare hikes don't apply to late nights and weekends. Right now, an extra mile is priced anywhere from 24 to 33 cents. Starting July 1st, each mile after the first three goes up to 40 cents. And it's pretty astonishing just how much, depending on distance, I have to pay for that. Sometimes it could be $2, $3, $6, so. They're gonna cap it at six. That's that still pretty expensive. <laughs> go one way on the red line from Shady Grove to DuPont Circle. We looked at off-peak hours. Right now, it costs $3.85. In July, the new fare jumps to $5.20. According to the new budget, Metro's rush hour flat rate will be $2. They'll cap long-distance fares at $6 on weekdays, $2 late nights. Also new in July, SNAP recipients get 50% discounts on trips. Is that a good change? That is. I think that's awesome, considering, I mean, aren't they trying to increase Metro ridership right now? Right. Um, so, yeah, that seems like a good idea. That achieves a goal? Yeah, I, I think so. And the good news again for consumers, that flat rate of two bucks on weekends and late night trips that will stay in place. Also, Metro says that once their budget is fully up and running, 75% of trips will have service every six minutes or less. Live in DuPont Circle, Ben Dennis, DC News Now. And thank you. Let's take a live look outside tonight where we had another stunning day today. The highs are in the low to mid 80s. Pretty perfect day. Let's head over to our weather forecaster, Brittany Ward, with a check on your weekend forecast. Brittany, it's been four years since D.C. has seen drought conditions. How long are we going to stay dry? You know, Taz, we are going to be staying dry as we head into the next couple of hours. We do have relief as we are heading into your weekend. Take a look at your drought monitor along that I-95 corridor. We are in this brownish color. That means we're at a moderate to drought close to that severe, and that's because we haven't really seen much rain fall across the DMV for the month of April. Then you head further off to the north and west along Hagerstown, I-81 in Winchester. You guys are in that yellow, which means we are seeing those dry conditions. But don't worry, we are going to be seeing relief as we head into your weekend. Satellite and radar showing you the overall picture. You're seeing those showers mainly down towards the south. These showers will begin to inch their way as we head into the evening and overnight hours. Hours, and these will be bringing us a little bit of a relief in the drought as we head into your weekend. So overall going to be a soggy weekend, but temperatures right now stepping out the door are fairly mild. 75 here in D.C. Our high today was actually 81, so we're a little bit cooler. 83 as you head over there to Hagerstown, 82 there in Frederick, 79 as you head over there to Martinsburg. So planning your evening here in the nation's capital by that six o'clock hour we're going to be holding on to the clouds still going to be fairly warm out there as temperatures are holding on to the 70s as we head into that eight and even 10 o'clock hour but as we head into those overnight hours that's when we start to see the rain work its way into our area and it looks like it's going to be sticking around as we head into your weekend so definitely keep it here we'll time out your weekend forecast for you guys in just a bit and new tonight, D.C. Police Chief Robert Conti is the city's top cop with some serious crime problems that he has to deal with. And violent crimes have been spiking in the city that he grew up in. Our political and government reporter Leonard and Fleming sat down with Chief Conti for an extensive interview in one of the most dangerous parts of the city. And Leonard, the chief remains optimistic that the district can get a handle on rising crime. That's exactly right. Robert Conti is a homegrown chief. He hails from D.C. and has his dream job to lead the department he rose in the ranks through. But it's a, it is a serious job with crime challenges as he approaches two years in charge after city council conf confirmed him in May of 2021. We're still in the fight. Uh, you know, we, D.C. is a resilient city. I'm a resilient chief. I'm from this city. Uh, the communities here are resilient. To say Robert Connie loves D.C. is an understatement. But the district's top cop has his hands full. Homicides are up 31 percent, sex abuse 55 percent, down from over 100 percent two weeks ago, and auto thefts up 108 percent. We talk about 
violent crime bring, being up about 2%. You know, really, at this point in the year, you know, four months into the year, it's really kind of, it's kind of hard to gauge what that's going to look like by the end of the year. Crime spikes now, the chief says, may not continue to climb. Last year, we started out with an uptick, and during the summer months, when crime generally goes up, here in Washington, D.C., we saw some, some very low lows, and we ended up with a 7% reduction in crime, a 10% reduction in, a uh, 7% reduction in violent crime, a 10% reduction in homicides, and 4% overall reduction in crime. And what does the chief need to fight crime? It's no one thing, right? It's not, oh, if you just hire more police officers, oh, if you just add more prosecutors, oh, if you just change this legislation, Legislation. It's all of those things because it's all of those things that contribute to where we are currently. You know, this has been a slow drip that has happened over time. One major challenge, keeping bad people in jail. Is there a problem with keeping bad guys? There is a problem with keeping bad guys in jail. We have a system right now that really is in favor of allowing people to be released for committing violent crimes in some instances uh, pending their trial. I think if you put a gun in a person's face, if you shoot somebody, if you rob somebody and you do anything that's involved in a violent crime, that burden to prove that you belong in community should be on you and not on the government to have to prove that. I asked the chief about comments he made two years ago about seizing fewer firearms and more about arresting people who have guns. Those are the right guns. The wrong hands are these people who commit violent crimes who continuously show up on report after report. The average homicide victim, average homicide suspect in the District of Columbia arrested 11 times. 11 times prior to them committing a homicide or becoming a homicide victim, right? So that is something telling. And I want to make sure that we stay focused on that. We walked a neighborhood in Southeast D.C. on Alabama Avenue, one of many wrought with violence. Here, violent crime is up 30% and six people have been murdered in the past two years. One of your officers told me uh, recently that this is a war zone, just in this area alone. Do you hear those types of statements about your city, your area here, um, a neighborhood like this where residents feel sometimes defeated. How does that make you feel? Well, obviously it doesn't make me feel good. But it really just makes me more determined. Uh, it tells me that we got a lot of work to do uh, in this particular community. Uh, while this is the story of this community, you know, the dynamic thing about Washington, D.C., you can drive two blocks and people have a different experience. Uh, so we have to focus in. Conti says the job weighs on him, but it doesn't stop him from going to nearly every crime scene. Has it been worth it to be in this job? Oh, absolutely. It absolutely has been worth it. I mean, I feel like I got the best job in the city. Yes, I get to see the worst of uh, the worst of the worst. I, yeah, that's part of it but also get to encounter grandmothers and, and little kids. I get to do some amazing things to give back to my city every single day. We will have more from our interview with the chief next week about the political pressures of the job and his views on how city council could better help in the crime fight. Reporting from the studio, Leonard and Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. Leonard, thank you. And still ahead on the news at five, a blazing forest fire continues to burn now for over 24 hours. What crews in Washington County are doing to contain the spread. Plus, the Pentagon League suspect, the 21 year old National Guardsman, appeared in court today. We'll have the latest on the serious charges he's now facing. You're watching DC News Now at five, covering the news where you live from Washington, DC to West Virginia. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more. As a service member, I can certainly appreciate Greenberg and Betterman's efficiency. There's not a lot of law firms that would go that far. Felt like it was much more of a personal family relationship. I was able to focus on healing and getting better while they took care of all of that legal stuff. We felt comfortable with Greenberg and Betterman the whole time. I couldn't ask for a better law firm. Greenberg and Betterman, contact us, feel better. At Checker, I'm in the driver's seat. Give me that $5 meal deal with the Checker Burger. Nah, a mushroom Swiss burger. Plus fries, chicken bites, and a drink for just five bucks. Or why not go big? I want a fried mushroom Buford. Whatever you order, own it at Checkers. This is the 2023 Nissan Pathfinder and Rogue. With a range of drive modes and intelligent off-road technology, you can take a Sunday stroll in the least basic of places. The 2023 Nissan family of SUVs. Anything but basic. Get a low $299 per month lease or get 0% financing for 36 months on Rogue.
man, it's lonely. Like, going through life lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music, just expressing how you feel. I'm going to talk to Howie about his feelings, make it into a song. Join us for the ride to end Alzheimer's, a one-day cycling event with multiple distances and routes for you to choose. Every mile counts in the fight against Alzheimer's. Scan the QR code now and register and join us Sunday, May 7th. And new tonight, Montgomery County Fire is reminding you about an incentive to keep your home safe. The county offers a property tax credit for installing a fire sprinkler system. Now, this reminder comes after a 25-year-old woman died in an apartment building fire in Silver Spring in February. The apartment building Melanie Diaz lived in did not have fire sprinklers because they weren't required to when the building was built more than 50 years ago. Now, Maryland will require all buildings to have sprinklers in them regardless of when they were built by January 1st of 2033. The property tax credit applies to any detached single-family home, any attached residence, or any multifamily building or a fire sprinkler system was not legally required to be installed. Now you have to apply for the tax credit in the year you have the sprinkler system installed and the tax credit cannot be more than the total cost of insulation or 50% of the county property tax that applies to the building, whichever one is cheaper. And a forest fire in Washington County has been burning since last night. As DC News Now reporter Anae Simmons reports, fire crews are finding the extremely dry weather this spring has made areas more susceptible to fire. Multiple agencies responded to a wildfire near Blairs Valley Lake in Washington County. A spokesperson with the State Division of Forestry gives an update as to how crews are battling the flames. Um, we've got several bulldozers up there put pit control lines. Uh, they're also using leaf blowers. Uh, where, where possible to uh, put in lines. Chris Smith, fire manager with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources Forest Service, says crews are also using chainsaws to cut away trees to keep the fire from having additional fuel. The fire started before 5 Thursday afternoon. Units from Washington County, Franklin County, Pennsylvania, and Frederick County, Maryland Fire and Rescue responded. Once they get some lines put in and, and are able to really kind of assess where they are, we'll, we'll get some better containment numbers. Smith says extremely dry conditions have contributed to the fire spreading, but firefighters are putting control lines in place to contain the blaze. On top of that, the weather we've had lately where we've got really warm temperatures, uh, really low relative humidities and some winds, and it, it's just a perfect recipe for, uh, for, for brush fires, for forest fires. What we're unsure of is just how much of the fire is contained due to crews not being able to access the backside of the mountain. No structures or no injuries were reported. Reporting in Clear Springs, Maryland, and A. Simmons, DC News Now. All right, so we're here with our weather forecast of Brittany Ward. And Brittany, good news is that we will see some rain this weekend. Yeah, you know, we've been dry the past couple of days. It's been warm, but now we are going to be seeing the rain as we head into your weekend. Take a look at your drought monitor. This is showing you that brownish color along that I-95 quarter just shows that we're in a moderate drought, whereas though further off to the north and west, we're in that yellow, meaning we are dry. We've seen a lot of dry conditions as we head through the entire month of April. In fact, we are in a rain deficit, which means we haven't even seen an inch of rain fall for the entire month of April, which is why we are under those drought conditions. It's actually been four years since DC has been in a moderate drought, but good news is on the way. We are tracking a few showers, mainly off to our south. That's going to continue to work its way into our area as we head into our evening tonight. And even for our weekend, not going to be a complete washout, but you may want to break out the rain jacket because you will need it as we head into the next 48 hours. A live look there at the Kennedy Center here in the nation's capital. This was the common scene all through your Friday. Lots of cloudy skies is what we saw as we head through your day today. And now we're going to start to see those showers track across our area late tonight into early Saturday. A few storms cannot be rolled out as we head into your Saturday afternoon. And it looks like we do get a break in those showers 
is heading into your Sunday. However, the break does not last for too long. We are tracking more showers late Sunday night and then a cool down as we start your work week. So kind of just showing you the overall picture radar showing you those showers right now just off to our south clip in southern uh, Maryland and just moving out of Richmond. The timing of these showers. Well, we could start to see them move into the DMV as we head into that eight o'clock hour. Lots of clouds. So again, any late night evening plans, make sure you have the umbrella on hand. As we head into the overnight, start to see some heavy to moderate rain showers along Leesburg and even portions of the district. But these showers will really be scattered in nature as we head through your evening tonight and even into your Saturday. Still going to be dealing with those lingering showers as that system finally pulls out Saturday afternoon. We do start your Sunday off again on the dry note. Could see some peaks of sunshine early Sunday morning before we start to see our next system track towards our area Sunday night. That's going to be popping up a few more showers as well as we head through your Sunday evening and to kickstart your Monday. So on and off again showers. That's what we're going to be dealing with as we take a look at your weekend outlook a little bit cooler as you head into Saturday 76 on Saturday and then by Sunday we start to warm things up getting back into the 80s. But again, we do have those chances of late showers back in the forecast. So not going to be a complete washout, but just make sure you have that umbrella on hand. Showers do continue as we head into the early morning hours on Monday. So heading to work on Monday could be a little bit soggy. Still on the cooler side, seeing those temperatures dip mainly into the 70s behind that cold front on Tuesday. We start to see them dip down mainly into the lower 60s, but then sunshine returns to the area heading into the middle of the work week. We're talking about 80s in the forecast by Thursday. Thursday, then we're holding on to the mid 80s by Friday, but then we do have those rain chances returning back into the DMV. So definitely keep it here. More news and weather coming up after the break. It's VIP days at Boscov's, our biggest home sale of the season. 25% off our entire stock of Keurig K-Cups. Choose from your favorite blends and flavors, just $16.49. $40 off the Hamilton Beach Flex Brew Coffee Maker, $79.99. Healthy meals are fast and easy with the Go Y 7-Quart Air Fryer, just $39.99. And $70 off the Hoover Cordless Stick Vacuum, $79.99. Incredible savings throughout the store during VIP days at all Boscov's. I'm attorney Mike Slover. I'm going to level with you. Not everyone likes me. In fact, there are a lot of insurance companies that don't like me at all. And plenty of their lawyers have outmaneuvered. I'm sorry. This is me. I'm not always nice, but I do fight for my clients. So do you want nice or do you want to win? 844 Mike wins. He's tough. And that's a promise. Do you know the secret to losing up to one pound of fat every day? At Brain and Body Health Center, we know the secret. Our unique weight loss program makes it easy to lose weight, get healthy, and get your energy back naturally, safely, and effectively. If you'd love to lose unhealthy fat without counting points or calories, no exercising, no prepackaged meals, no HCG, no drugs, no hypnosis or surgery, call Brain and Body Health Center today at 540-328-2060. Hi there, it's Lori from Shenandoah Country Q102, and I feel amazing. I have my energy and my confidence back thanks to the team at Brain and Body Health Center. I've lost 30 pounds with their weight loss program, and I know the secret. Many patients lose 20 to 30 pounds in about a month. That's a half a pound to a pound per day. For your free private weight loss consultation, call Brain and Body Health Center today at 540-328-2060. That's 540-328-2060 or at brainandbodyhealthcenter.com. And a national news night, the 21-year-old Air National Guardsman accused of stealing and leaking Pentagon documents appeared in court today. Already say he's facing some serious charges. Our Washington correspondent Alexander Lamone joins us live in Alexandria. You actually had a chance to go through the court documents. What'd you find? Good evening. Well, one of the things we learned in those court documents is that authorities were able to track down this suspect thanks to the billing records from the social media site he was using. 
21-year-old Air National Guardsman Jack Teixeira was in court Friday. Teixeira was arraigned facing charges under the Espionage Act. There are very serious penalties associated with that. Authorities say Teixeira was the leader of the private chat group where the military documents were first leaked in December. The Justice Department says it will seek the most serious consequences. We intend to, to uh, send that message, uh, how important it is uh, to our national security. Court documents reveal that before his arrest, Teixeira tried to find out if authorities were on to him by searching the word leak in a classified system. This individual and any of his accomplices need to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. They betray the confidence of their country. Massachusetts Congressman Jake Auchincloss says that besides holding the leaker accountable, the Pentagon needs to answer some serious questions. About why it is that a junior enlisted Air National Guardsman has need-to-know access to highly sensitive documentation about Ukrainian war plans. Rhode Island Senator Jack Reed says he expects a review of how people gain security clearance. What is hard to capture is someone who either later changes their mind about the importance of secrecy or someone who is deliberately uh, concealing uh, information. Now, the judge in this case ordered Teixeira to remain in custody at least through his next hearing, which is scheduled for Wednesday. Live in Washington, Alexandra Limon. And Alexandra, a quick question. President Biden still in Ireland, but has he addressed this leak and arrest? We did get a statement from President Biden, and in it he commended authorities for working so quickly to arrest a suspect once this leak became public. And he also said that he has instructed intelligence agencies and the Pentagon to further restrict who has access to sensitive information. And correspondent Alexander Lamone, thank you so much for being here and for your time. And we have an update tonight. Your commute may not be delayed for another week. That's because the National Park Service says it's pushing back plans to close a section of the northern part of the George Washington Parkway until next weekend because of the expected rainy weather that Brittany was telling you about we're going to see this weekend. So workers need dry weather for restripping. The major construction project is expected to be finished in the year 2025.